grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. A very warm welcome to this service. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. The Almighty and Merciful Lord, Grant you pardon and forgiveness of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> God the Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to follow in his service, whose kingdom has no end. For he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, 
I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will sheep out, seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, Thus says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in, in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? 
world around Through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me Lord, your summons echoes true when you would call my name Let me turn and follow you and never be the same In your company I'll go Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, you that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you. Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So today we celebrate Christ the King. And in our reading we talk about Christ being on the throne as King. And the nations are brought before him. And he asks people questions. And we may find those questions unsettling and we may find that we don't look at the whole of the question, the whole of the implication behind it. Certainly there are questions that we all have to face about feeding the hungry, caring for the sick, visiting those in prison, clothing the naked. And for people probably a few years older than me and younger, although there may be a cut-off, I can't help thinking, but isn't the welfare state for that? I'm sure there are people watching who grew up before the welfare state existed and can remember how difficult things were then. And I'm sure there are people watching who look at the situation today and question whether the welfare state is working. To a certain extent, that's a red herring, but it does make it harder because 
for my generation, we don't expect to find hungry people in this country. Although, of course, at the moment we do. But again, Jesus isn't talking just about this country. He's talking about the world and there are hungry people in the world. And what do we do about that? But today, I think I want to look at a different side to the story. Uh, I forget how many times I've heard this reading. I forget how many times I've preached on it. Uh, I suspect I've preached on it at least ten times. And this time is the first time that it struck me who the beneficiaries of this are. Now you may think that's obvious. You may think that it is those who are hungry and are fed, those who are naked and are clothed, those who are in hospital or in prison and are visited. But actually, I think those on the other side of the coin also gain a benefit. And I think Jesus knows this and is challenging us as to whether we've been prepared to learn, whether we've been prepared to put ourselves out there. Society today seems to be more stratified than it was when I was younger. They used to say of David Cameron that not only did he not know any poor people, he didn't know anybody who knew poor people. Now, I don't know whether that's true or not, but that is a sign of the way in which society is stratifying. And if you don't know any poor people, then it's very difficult to understand what their life is like. It's very difficult to understand how much privilege you are living off. I'm a fine one to talk about privilege. I went to university at a time when grants were paid. I got a job which had a final salary pension. I live in a house that is bigger than I can afford. And yet the challenge of Jesus is to understand those who aren't like us. And in feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, visiting the sick and in prison, we can get a sense of how other people's lives are. The Church of England has just launched a report called Living in Love and Faith, which is about... Uh, sex, marriage, gender, and I'm not sure whether it's the first time, but certainly unusually for the Church of England, the report doesn't come to a conclusion. It lays out all the information and encourages people to meet together, to discuss it, to understand where each other are coming from. Unfortunately, already there seem to be uh, people who are saying there's no point in doing this. I have to say I have more sympathy with one end of the spectrum than the other, because at one end of the spectrum there is no point in doing it, because the Bible tells us what we need to know, and what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. Therefore, why would we discuss it with somebody who doesn't agree with us? At the other end of the spectrum, you have those who say, why would I meet with somebody with the kind of attitude I've just described, 
who is not likely to listen to me. It doesn't feel safe. If we meet with those who are hungry, those who are naked, those who are in hospital or in prison, we can perhaps understand a little more of what it is like to walk in their shoes. What it is like to live the lives they've lived to have to make the choices that they've made. It can be very tempting to think, well, I've made it, why can't they? But suppose your life had been different. Suppose you grew up in a home where uh, you weren't allowed to do your homework. Would you have got the exam results you did? Would you have gone on to further study? If you have grown up in a household where you are constantly shouted at, would you have learnt that the way to interact with other people is to shout at them? If you grew up in a household where you were beaten, did you learn that the way to get your, what you wanted was to beat other people? And that leads to prison. And once you are in prison, it is very difficult to get out of the cycle. I think in asking whether we have fed the hungry, clothed the naked, visited those in hospital or in prison. Jesus is not only worried about the recipients of our largesse, but he's worried about the attitude we show. Have we shown an I'm all right Jack attitude? Or have we learnt from them? and learnt some compassion. Amen. Let us profess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe, we believe in, in one God, God the Father, Father the, Almighty, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of, earth, of all, all that, that is seen and unseen. unseen. We believe, we believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, he became incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our, For our sake, sake he was crucified under Pontius, Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On, On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. And he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come, come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen.
We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we are all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, 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 peace be with you. Peace be with you. Let us humble ourselves in the presence of God and pray to him for the church and for the world. Loving God, in all our ministry as the church, both laity and clergy, on Sundays and on weekdays and now online, may we give glory to you and further your kingdom. Direct us to those who are searching and give us wisdom to know how best to draw them to your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, may we actively seek to do good, to stand up against injustice and work for peace. We pray for our world as we seek to overcome the pandemic. We pray for countries where there is unrest or fighting, for those suffering the effects of war and now COVID-19 as well. We pray for all refugees living in terrible conditions, afraid and desperate. Be with them that they may know your love and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, in this our community, may we see and help those in need. Families struggling at this time with financial and health worries. Older people living alone, who are lonely and afraid. People who are in fear of using, losing their homes. May we remember that what we do for them, we do for you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, search for the lost. Bring back those who have strayed. Bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. Help us all to share in this work of loving care. and those known only to us. Be with them, and may they know your love and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, welcome into your kingdom those who have died recently. We pray for those who mourn, especially those who have been unable to say goodbye. May they know that you were there with arms open to welcome them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you have so shown us such love and humility. We offer you our thanks and praise. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>